This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. This is Matthew chapter 10, beginning at the 40th verse. Jesus said, Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water <clears throat> to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of God, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated or make yourself comfortable. It is, uh, it's a it's a great thing to be able to be together and to be able to uh, to puzzle over scripture and to uh, to receive uh, you know this 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 direction this um, this uh, this uh, instruction and blessing from God. Um, but I you know I gotta ask this question. So do you trust God? I mean, do you trust God? I mean, with all of the stuff going on in the world today, where has He been? <laughs> What has he been up to? What kinds of things has he been has he been preoccupying himself with? With all of the coronavirus uh, that's out there, with all of the racial tension that's going on, um, you, know, you know, where has he been? This question about uh, whether we can trust God or not—it's really at the heart of of much of our struggle, isn't it? And it's at the heart of uh, the Old Testament lesson. Uh, for today, and this and this uh, this this uh, interchange uh, with with Abraham, uh, it starts out. The lesson does. It says, and sometime later, God tested Abraham. God tested Abraham. Well, I don't take testing to be a terribly friendly kind of thing to do. do I mean, I don't like being tested. Um, I like just being accepted. Um, and yet, uh, and yet, it sets the tone for this entire passage, and uh, and and we, the temptation is for us to to read it like God is trying to have Abraham jump through hoops. But the idea of being tested is important in our life, and it's important in our in our spiritual journeys. Um, you know, I, you know. I got in my car and I drove here today, but before I ever even got this car, um, before I purchased it, um, it had been tested. It had been tested in a thousand different ways in order to be able to know that it was going to function in a way that was going to represent what they were telling me it was going to do. Uh, in fact, you know, you can't go into your house and buy all, and look at almost anything that you've bought without knowing that it's got the house, the good housekeeping seal of approval that has been tested. You know, that if you buy a lamp, it's not going to burn up on you or, or a toaster or an air conditioner that's going to work. Uh, it, testing is, testing is important. We're waiting for a virus, for a, for a vaccine for this virus. And and there are over a hundred different vaccines in the running, and they're all being tested, and we want them to be tested. <laughs> I don't want anybody putting anything in my body until it's been tested. We're tested all through our lives, we are. It's part of what makes education possible is because students are tested in order to be able to know what they know and what they don't know. And so this process of being tested is, is critical to what it means to be human, what it means to be safe, what it means to grow. And so God chooses to test Abraham, not because he wants to play games and make him jump through hoops or walk through a maze, but, uh, but because he cares for him. This testing is, uh, is for Abraham and, and for the demonstration of God's love for him. And yet, you got to scratch your head. This is one of the toughest Old Testament passages um, that has got to be out there. He says, um, so what's he testing him with? He says, Abraham, here I am. I like that here I am. You know, it's J Abraham, notice, as we go through the reading several times, he says, a here I am. Abraham, reporting for duty, sir. Always reporting for duty. Uh, he doesn't hide. 
He doesn't slink away. He's not in the shadows. He reports for duty. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Wow. Wow. Now just a little context um, for this passage. So Abraham um, existed, uh, existed before Jesus, before King David, uh, before Moses. He is in the very early pages of the Bible in Genesis. And, uh, and when he and his wife, Sarah, were 75 years old, uh, God came to them and said uh, they'd not been able to have any children. And he was, he, the two of them were chosen by God to have a son, and that son was going to be the son of promise. And uh, he said, look up, Abraham, look up into the sky and see all the stars in the sky. You will have, you will be the father of many nations and, and the descendants your descendants will be greater than all of the stars in the sky. And, uh, and Abraham and Sarah laughed. <laughs> they laughed because they were 75 years old and going to have a child. Uh, but the promise of God was made. And yet time went on. Time went on. 25 years time went on. At one point, they decided to take measures into their own hand, and so there was a handmaid, Hagar, and the, the resulting birth of Ishmael, but God said, no, I mean, uh, I'll, uh, I'll bless Ishmael, but that's not the fulfillment of my promise. And at a uh, hundred years old, Sarah becomes pregnant and gives birth to a son, the son Isaac. And so finally, Finally, they've been waiting. They've been waiting for all this time for this child, and they've got him. So many hopes and dreams are embedded in this boy. And so he, he grows up, and he's, he's you know, what, eight, nine, ten years old, enough to be helpful you know, around the house and helpful with his father. And now this testing comes. This child, who is the, the, the embodiment of hopes and dreams for the future, precious beyond imagining. And God says, Abraham, I want you to take that boy, and I want you to go to the mountain, and I want you to sacrifice him to me. Trust in God. So this story is not just Abraham's story, but it's also our story. And we're invited to, to ask the question, so what do, we, what do we put our hope in? What do we believe that's, that this thing is precious to us? that this thing offers us a bright and hopeful future, that, that if we just simply cling to this, everything will be, will be really wonderful. It can, be, it can be our kids. It can be, uh, it can be our finances. Uh, it can be our businesses. Uh, it can be our status. It can, be, uh, it can be our education. It can be all different kinds of things that we as human beings have a way of, of producing and just looking at and seeing that that one embodies all of our hopes and dreams. And, and God comes to us as he comes to Abraham and says, you see this? You see that mountain over there? I want you to, 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 take, to take that, and I want you to go and sacrifice it to me. Boy, it doesn't seem, 
doesn't seem right and it doesn't seem fair. For three days, um, Abraham had packed everything up. He got the wood for the fire. He got the fire. He had a donkey, two helpers, and Isaac. And for three days, they journeyed. Now, um, what are the feelings that you can imagine for, for Abraham to go through? Resentment, anger, bitterness, disappointment, fear. And yet, um, Anjani went, and those were uh, perhaps the longest days of Abraham's life. And finally, they uh, they arrive at the at the at the mountain, going through the darkness of the nights, and wondering kind of what the conversation along the road must have been like. So they arrive at the mountain, and and uh, and Abraham says to his servants, he says, "Just stay here with the donkey, and uh, the boy and I, we're going to go up there." and we'll be back. We'll be back, the, the faith of Abraham. Hopeful thinking or trust. As they're walking along, um, Isaac says, uh, Dad, he says, we got the wood, we got the fire. Where's the lamb? Um, the Lord will provide the lamb for us, Isaac. Wishful thinking, bold faith. So uh, slowly, <laughs> hoping something will happen, um, Abraham and Isaac, they find the rocks and they build an altar, and they they take the wood and they put it on the altar, and then the moment comes. It's called it's called the binding of Isaac. When Isaac, when Abraham finally turns to his son. And he binds his hands, probably behind his back. And he places them on his altar. You can only just imagine the, the, uh, the look on Isaac's face. Uh, Darcy Weir has done a wonderful job uh, in the meditation on, on, on this passage of scripture. Places him on this altar. You know, uh, a side note um, about child sacrifice. Um, child sacrifice was rampant uh, during the time of Abraham, and and many primitive religions practiced it. And in uh, South America, the Incas, the Aztecs, Machu Picchu is a is a is a big is a big. Uh, Hill, um, the purpose for which um, was child sacrifice. Uh, they, the archaeologists have found uh, a pit of 300 children that had been sacrificed. And in the area where Abraham lived, the Canaanites in that area, the gods of uh, Baal and Molech and the Ashtoreth, they all demanded child sacrifice, sometimes in order to be able to placate God in order to be able to placate their version, this perverted God of theirs, so that they could survive a drought or, or win a battle, or uh, just because the seasons were changing. And so then regularly as a part of the annual custom is the sacrifice of children. So what's the difference? The invitation is for us 
to come and, and to place those things that are precious on the altar of God. Our children, our spouses, our businesses. St. Paul even writes in Romans, he says, present therefore your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God, for that is your reasonable service. So what is the difference between these pagan, ugly, hateful gods and the God of Abraham? There was an angel. There was an angel as, as, uh, as Abraham lifted the knife to kill his own son. The voice from an angel. Abraham, Abraham, stop! <laughs> Don't lay a hand on that boy. Now that I know that you fear me above all else, And so with those words, with those words, the knife comes down and, and, and cuts the ropes that held Isaac bound. Hugs, receiving back his son, and... Uh, and a ram that's caught in a thicket over on the side. And so together, Abraham and Isaac sacrificed the lamb, a sacrifice of thanksgiving and gratitude. Abraham uh, named that place Jehovah Jireh the Lord will provide that the kind of God that we serve is not a God that is filled with hatred, that is filled with ugliness, that is filled with a longing for war and human blood. But the God that we serve is a God who advocates on our behalf, is a God who, who brings to us the opportunity for life, who tests us in order to make us strong to face the challenges of the day and who knows that unless we put these precious things on the altar and offer them up we will never be free we will always be imprisoned by our own ego and selfishness and so we have a God who provides for us Mount Moriah, this very spot where the sacrifice of Isaac was offered goes on to become uh, in the center of Jerusalem the, the, the place in which the temple is built. And it is in that place that, uh, that the ultimate provision for us is made as, as the Lamb of God in the life of Jesus carries his own wood to his own sacrifice for us that we would be healed. Now, I got to ask you the question again. So do you trust God? In the midst of all of the difficulties, in the midst of all of the darkness, in the midst of all of the challenges and in the midst of all of the testing that takes us down to our knees and challenges everything that we think. Do you trust him? Has he demonstrated himself to you to be trustworthy? That's the opportunity that is given to us. And, and, and every time, when we need reassurance, when we question whether or not we have the strength to make it, 
when we, when we question whether God cares or anybody else cares about what we suffer and anyone else understands. We have only to look to the altar and to the cross where God himself has become our sacrifice and a sign that he will always, always, always provide for us and care for us and surround us with his love. Amen.